Today we're going to be talking about why the United States purchases Alaska, and before we can begin a discussion on that, we have to look at the Pacific. Um, the United States, along with uh, Secretary William Seward, um, wanted to dominate the Pacific. So if we go back to the beginning of the unit, as you recall, we wind up opening up trade with Japan in 1854 when President Mill Millard Fillmore sent over Commodore Matthew Perry with a letter to the Japanese asking that they open up ports for trade. Uh, the Treaty of Kanagawa uh, lets that happen, so they open up tr ports of trade. They also agreed to help out shipwreck sailors. Um, also, under Seward, what he's going to wind up acquiring was Midway Island, and he's also going to wind up purchasing Alaska, which we'll get to in a moment. But when it comes to dominating the Pacific, other things that the United States do throughout this age of imperialism unit is they wind up annexing Hawaii. Annex, again, of course, meaning to add on. Um, after the Spanish-American War, we're going to get control of the Philippines. We're going to get control of Guam. And then when we look at China after the 1900 Boxer Rebellion, we wind up gaining a sphere of influence and power to trade in China. But let's talk about Alaska. Uh, when we look at Alaska, it doesn't seem like a popular destination for people to vacation, unless you're an outdoorsy type. But when we look at Alaska and why we wind up purchasing it in 1867, a lot was going on in 1867. Right? And this political cartoon really gets down to it. If we start over here and just look at this person in this chair, he should be familiar. And I'm not saying he should be familiar when you're just looking at the individual in the chair, but maybe the reflection in the mirror might help you out. Because that person is Andrew Johnson. And if you recall with Andrew Johnson, his presidency was not going well. There's a political cartoon we analyzed of him vetoing the Freedmen's Bureau. Of course, he wasn't very popular with Congress. Here he is after uh, they found out that he was innocent from being impeached. And again, they always mocked him by putting the crown on his head and referring to him as King Andy. And going back to this political cartoon here where you know he can't handle his job when you're looking at the Constitution. He's drawn as a little boy. That was something that was often done. And you look, of course, when you're looking at Volume 14, this was Volume 14, which was an amendment that was going to help out African Americans. And again, we see him vetoing the Freedmen's Bureau, things that did not make him popular, especially with Congress, which eventually led to his impeachment. But let's go back to this cartoon. All right, so here we have President Andrew Johnson sitting in the chair. There he is looking at the reflection of himself, and he's often portrayed as, as a king by political cartoonists, especially in this one uh, drawn by Thomas Nast. Right behind him is Secretary of State William Seward, and it's a little bit odd because this man is dressed as a woman, uh, kind of serving as like a mommy here, rubbing this Russian salve on his head, which is a type of medicine. So what's going to be the cure here, um, which is what is that that word actually means, with all of the problems going on in Johnson's presidency, um, if the United States purchased Alaska, this would be a type of welcome distraction. Now, if you look in the back background, we have some symbolism. The U.S. flags on these cold mountain peaks in Alaska. Of course, we have Uncle Sam running in snowshoes from, from a polar bear. And then right over here in the background, of course, this cartoonist is mocking it. They're saying one of the advantages, and they're showing this frozen tundra region. These are supposed to be Eskimos. Um, so we wind up actually purchasing Alaska from Russia for $7.2 million. And originally when we find out about Alaska, when the public finds out about it, going back to our notes here, um, they refer to it as a folly. And many Americans thought of Alaska as this barren land of icy mountains and frozen fish. It was a complete joke. And when we look at Alaska and you think of this cold region, that, that's exactly what people have in their mind. But it turns out that that $7.2 million, going back, um, happened to be pretty much of a discount because they wound up later on finding out that Alaska was rich in gold, timber, copper, petroleum, natural gas, and even the lowlands were suitable for farming. Um, another thing, when we're looking at why Russia wants to part with Alaska, a couple of reasons. Um, they needed money. Um, they felt that Alaska was too far for them to govern, so for them it was just an easy way to get rid of it. Um, but it winds up becoming profitable to the United States in the end. Um, just a quick review of uh, 
of uh, taking control of the Pacific. William Seward wanted the U.S. to dominate trade in the Pacific. One of them is going to be by annexing, adding on, or taking over areas such as Midway Island, as we just went over. Um, Seward's going to help to buy Alaska from Russia for $7.2 million. Russia's going to want to get rid of it for a couple of reasons. They needed money. Um, it was too far for them to govern. When we first buy it, it's deemed as a folly or a mistake. Uh, many Americans thought of it as a wasteland, but then we later find out it's rich in a lot of things, such as uh, gold, timber, copper, petroleum, and the lowlands are suitable for farming.